What's going on guys, John Elder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to output stuff from the database to the screen with Django and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at pulling stuff from the database and outputting it to the screen. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership with all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, in the last video, we looked at the Django admin area. We added our events, my club users, and venues tables. In this video, I'm going to show you how to pull this data from the database and output it onto an actual web page itself. So we're not going to be dealing with the Django administration area for the most part going forward, except for to add data and tweak things here and there. From now on, we're going to be looking at how to do all of this stuff on the actual web page itself. So you see, I've got a page here called events. We've got a couple of events. I went through here and I added another venue, area 41. If we click on this, we can see the stuff. And I also added another event, which is the alien parade at area 41. I don't know. So we've got a couple of venues, we've got a couple of events, we've got two users, John Elder and Jane Elder, and they are maybe going through the events or maybe not, we're not sure yet. We want to take all of this stuff and output it onto the screen from the database. So how do we do that? Well, that's what we're going to look at in this video. So let's head over to our code and let's head over to templates. And the first thing we want to do is create an actual page to go to, right? So let's go to events, right click and create a new file. And let's go file save as and let's save this as like event underscore list that HTML. This is just going to be a list of the events that are currently going on, right? So then we can come to sort of any of these pages, for instance, home, and I'm just going to copy all of this and paste it in here. And instead of this, let's just say uh, event list or events. And we probably don't want to center this. And okay, this will be fine for now. Let's go ahead and save this. We'll tinker with this in a bit. So now we need an actual URL for this page. So let's go to our URLs.py file and let's create a path. And inside of here, we want to point this to like events. So this will be the URL localhost slash events, right? And this will point to views dot, let's just call this all events. We'll create this function in just a second. And let's give this a name of, I don't know, list events, call it anything you want. And all right, that should work comma, make sure we have a comma right here above it as well. Okay, so that's our URL. Pretty simple there. Now we need an actual view. So let's head over to our views. So let's create a new function. Let's define and this is all underscore events. And we want to pass in requests because we always want to do that. Now we're calling this all events because our URLs.py file, we pointed to views dot all events, right? So we need to create all events. So that's what this is. Now, we want to actually pull the data from the database in this function. So we have to actually import that table in our views.py file. So up here, let's go from dot models, import event. So I'm calling dot models because our models.py file is in the same directory as this views.py file. You see it's right here. So we can call dot models to reference this models.py file. And this event obviously references our class event. So what we're saying is pull in all of this stuff into this view, right? So to do that, we have to actually query the database. And so let's create a variable. I'm going to call it event list. And this is just going to be event dot objects dot all. Now this will go to the event class, which is, you know, this thing, and it will grab all of the objects in that class. So all of the records that are in the database in that events table will pull out and we'll assign to this event list variable. So now we just pass this event list variable to our web page, just like we do everywhere else. So we return render, right? We're just gonna do the same thing like we did right here, pass in that list. So to do that, we just go return and then render, and then we pass in our request as always. And now what page is this? Well, it's in events slash event underscore list dot HTML. And that's just, our templates events directory right here. And remember, we named this file event underscore list.html. So that's event underscore list.html. And then finally, we want to pass in our context dictionary. Let me put this on another line so it's easy to read. And we just want to pass in this variable, right? So event list and then colon event list. So now we pass this in. So now we can reference this on our 
web page itself. So let's head back over here to our event list page and we can just sort of put this on the screen and see what it does. So this is gonna pull all of the events out of our event table and put them off on the screen. Now, it's not gonna do exactly how you think, but let's go ahead and save this and reload our page and see what it looks like. You can see it's just passing a query set and you can see this is all smushed together. Let's fix that real quick. So let's uh, head over to our base.html and right here, let's put a div with a class equals container. This is just a bootstrap container. And let's close it, save this, come back over here. Okay, so it pushes it over a little bit. So you'll notice we've got a query set here and it has all of our events, softball at the park and the alien parade, right? So all of the data is there, but obviously this doesn't look great. So we need to loop through here. But first let's put a quick link up in the nav bar. Kind of forgot to do that. So let's go to our nav bar, come down here to this March link and let's just copy it real quick and paste it in. And instead of it saying March, let's say events. And instead of it putting, pointing to home, let's point it to, let's see, where's our urls.py file? We want to point it to list events. And we don't want to pass anything. So it's just on its own. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this. Come back over here, reload. Okay, so we can navigate around and okay, that's looking good. But now how do we sort of get the information out of this weird object query set looking thing? Well, we just need to loop through it. So let's head back over to our event list. And instead of just printing out this whole thing, let's loop through here. So let's go for event in event underscore list. It's just a basic for loop. What do we want to print out? Well, let's just print out for now the event itself. So save this. Now we also need to end our for loop. We always need to do that. So end for. Okay, so let's save this and come over here and reload. Now we see softball at the park and alien parade. So the names of the things are being smushed out onto the screen, but it's all jumbled together. So that's not great. So we might do something like um, make an unordered list. Come down here and close our unordered list. And then inside of here, just use an li tag for a list item. Now this will put each one on a separate line with a little dot next to it. So, okay, that's fun. Softball at the park and alien parade. So just that easy, we're now printing out some of the stuff from our model, from our database. Now this is just the name, how do we get other stuff? Well, we can access all of the stuff, let's pull up our models.py file, all of the stuff in this event Class. So we can pull the name, the date, the venue, the manager, the description, and the attendees. So to do that, we just reference dot whatever. So dot name or dot event date. So, you know, we could pull out, for instance, the event date. So if we come over here and go event dot event date. This is just going to print out the date, but you can see just how easy it is to do this, right? So let's play around with this a little bit. I'm going to maybe create an unordered list for each of these instead of one big unordered list. Let's get rid of that and maybe get rid of that. And let's just copy this two, three, four, five, six. I don't remember exactly how many there were, but we could just come through here and maybe we pull this one out and put it on top without an LI. Maybe we just give it a strong tag or something, make it bold. And then inside of here, and let's put a line break after it, we could just play around with this. So let's go back over to our models.py file and we want the date. So let's copy that one. So event.date. And we also want the venue, event.venue. And we want the manager, event.manager. And we want the description. And we also want the attendees. Now this is a little bit weird and you'll see in just a second what I mean. So if we save this and hit reload, now we see softball at the park and alien parade and underneath each one, the date, the venue. And we could play around with this even more. We could say, we could be explicit. We could go uh, date colon and then venue colon. 
manager colon description colon and attendees colon. Now this is all kind of getting hard to read. So I'm just going to tab it over so we can read it easier. Save this. Now if we hit reload, we see the date, the venue, the manager, the description. And now look at this attendees. It's this events.myclubuser.none. So what's going on here? Well, remember the attendees are another model. So if we pull up our models, remember our attendees, this is a many to many field. So that's my club users. So in order to actually access them, we need to tweak this just a little bit. We need to call dot all, right? So if we do this and then hit reload, we're going to get another query set object that has each of the my club users, Jane Elder and John Elder. This one, only John Elder signed up. So to get this, we need to loop through this once again. So, okay, just like we did up here, right? We need to do a loop. And so let's do it right here. Let's go for, let's say, user in this. Now we can access user dot whatever. So if we save this and run it, we're still going to need to tweak this. Ah, forgot to end our block. So we've got a for loop. We also need to end the for loop. I usually do that right at the beginning when I create the loop because I always forget, as we just saw. So we need to end our for loop right there. So, okay, let's go ahead and save this. Come back over here. Now, attendees John Elder, attendees Jane Elder. Eh, that doesn't look great. Instead, let's go, let's pull this attendees out. And close our li like that. And then inside of here, instead of putting li, let's just put a space. So if we save this and run it, and we can tinker with this all we want. We can see now attendees, John Elder, Jane Elder, we can put a comma between them. We can put them on their own line. Uh, we could do anything we want. So for instance, if we wanted to just really quickly put a line break, do it like that, right? Or maybe like that. I'm just playing at this point, right? Right, so, okay, that's looking good. Now, another thing I wanna mention, the venue. Right. Remember, if we pull our code back up and look at our models. This venue is also a foreign key referencing this venue class, which is up here. So now we can also reference all of these things as well through our event class by just referencing the dot whatever. So, for instance, the web, if we want the URL for this venue. We could reference that by coming up here and calling event dot venue dot web. So if I copy this, and let's make another one of these and do it like this. If we save this, now if we come back over here and hit reload, we see the URL is listed in the venue. And instead of that saying venue, let's maybe, I don't know, change that to venue URL or venue website. Save this, reload. But you get the idea. We can now reference all of the stuff in the venue class by just calling event.venue.whatever, dot .web, dot .name, dot .address, dot .zip code, dot .phone, dot .web, or dot .email address. So very, very cool. Just with that one little thing on our views.py file, where we pulled in all of the event objects, we can now, for all practical purposes, access everything in our entire database because they're all linked together. So very, very cool and just that easy. All right, so now this isn't looking great. Maybe we want to put a line break here, right? I don't know, Just playing around. But you can make this look any way you want. And in the coming videos, we'll be able to click on these and go to each, we'll give each of these things their own page instead of just outputting the data on the screen like this. But for now, I just wanted to show you how to sort of get the stuff out of the database onto the website. And we could play around with this. We could go to getbootstrap.com, click on docs, come down to components, click on cards, and then let's scroll through here and grab this nice header footer card. 
All right, so I can copy this code. And if we wanted to kind of spruce this up a little bit, we could come down here to our loop. And let's just sort of paste this in here. And instead of this saying featured, we would want this to say event. So we can copy that and paste that here. Let's get rid of that. And then for this, the title, let's do maybe the venue. Copy that, put that where the title is. But we don't want it to be an li, so we'll get rid of that. And then the rest of this stuff can go just sort of right here in this p tag. So maybe we just grab all of this through here and just kind of maybe paste it in here. And I'm not sure how this is going to look. So let's go ahead and save this and reload it and see. Oh, yeah, it looks pretty good. So you know, you could come through here, maybe you don't want these dots, maybe, you know, we could play with this out the wazoo, but it's already looking pretty good, just as it is. So maybe if you wanted to get rid of the dots, you could instead take out all the UL stuff and instead switch this to strong. So there, 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 and there. Of course, you gotta close our strong tag. So instead of LI, that, and that, and get rid of this LI, and then we're just sort of goofing around here, but these now all need line breaks. It's getting unruly, isn't it? Oh, let's get rid of this guy. Description. Actually, this goes here. Okay, so I don't know. Get rid of that. Save this. I probably made a mess of that, but okay, now it's looking a little nicer, maybe. I don't know. Which one do you like better? I kind of like the old way better. <laughs> so let's go through here and undo all of that. <laughs> ah, redo. Save this, come back, reload. Ah, I think that looks a little bit better. But anyway, you get the idea. You know, these are really close together. Maybe we could do another line break. Push them apart a little bit. Eh, whatever. But you get the idea. Just that easy to sort of grab stuff out of the database, output it onto the screen, and then just format it however you want to make it look however you want. The important part is how we pull it out of the database. And you've seen in this video, it's drop dead easy. And that's really cool. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 taxes, all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.